Hello everybody, thank you for stopping back at the Cranberry Cornstalk YouTube channel, a channel where we share our love for primitive decor. We make all kinds of things and we share how we make them. Uh, this week it is Friday again, the week just flew, I don't know about yours, but it keeps snowing off and on here, it doesn't want to warm up, but spring is just around the corner. And like I said, for all of you doll lovers, this is the week for another doll video where we're going to be making a little primitive leprechaun. He is adorable, but if you want me to continue to make doll videos, please share with your friends who love to make dolls so that I can get my numbers up for the doll making videos. They're a little bit down, and I know a lot of you guys love them and watch them but you just don't click the like or the subscribe. And if you click that bell, we remind you every time I put another video out so you can follow along and make another doll for the holiday or just for a gift, things like that. Now I did use my regular doll um, pattern that I make, just draw a body and a head, the same one that I made in the last video of the doll. It's just the same body. So if you don't know that, check back two videos ago and I showed just how I drew it. That's the only thing that is not in this video. I shared how I drew the pattern before I made it. So that's what I did here. I just drew a regular doll body and head together. No legs or arms yet. I did draw them out separately and cut them out separately, but I'll show you in the video how I did that. I'm just sewing the two pieces together, the head and the body.
just to get a little bit of weight on the doll, what I do is take a stocking and cut it in the width of the doll and add two inches on either side. And you're going to fill your stocking material up with something heavy. You can use rice, you can use sand, you can use buckwheat, you can just, just about anything you can fill in there. And the nice thing about using something like buckwheat or sawdust, you can always add that in your description and people really like that old fashioned, the idea that they have buckwheat or sawdust in their doll. And um, here I didn't, I just used sand, but um, you just put in your stocking, tie a knot on each end, and then that makes weight for the doll to sit. And uh, it just seems a little better quality whenever you have that weight in the doll. Um, I know when I pick up a doll, I think it's a nicer doll if it's a little bit heavier. So that's what's nice about that. You can do it in the arms and the legs as well. Um, that's just a little tip for you. Anything, you can put rocks in there, little tiny clean rocks. or I mean, you can find about anything as a filler at the dollar store. Dollar Tree sells them for a dollar, so it's a nice cheap way. Or you can just, maybe you have some resources like that in your home that you could use. So that's what I did here. And I'm going to attempt to sew the seam up instead of by hand because I do sometimes run out of time. I was going to try to uh, wrangle it under the machine and sew it, you know, with the presser foot. It was a little difficult. You could see I did struggle, but I got it done and saved myself a little bit of time. Sometimes I wonder if I do or if I should have just went ahead and did it by hand, but this is how I did this one. portion you can see I am just measuring and cutting out the ears I'm trying to figure out what an elf ear would look like you know the shape of them they seem to be really long and with long ear lobes and maybe curly and so that's what I was doing there I'm just um, trying to figure out what size I want the ears to be and what they're going to look like on the doll when I'm done it's just kind of a trial and error process I did end up cutting them more than this in the video later on and shaping them differently it's just kind of one of those things what do you want your doll to look like just cut the ears out and go with it trim where you have to go back and restuff or unstuff now in this case um, you just cut out four of the shape so so around your edge again and um, what i used was quilt batting so it's just a flat piece of like a polyfill but it's already flat like a piece of fabric but it's thick and if I had to do it over again, I would have put it in between the ear pieces here and sewn it in. But I wasn't sure what I was doing yet. So, so to save you a step, if you're making this doll, 
just go ahead and cut the quilt batting out or the thick uh, fiber cotton, whatever you decide to use for the ear, just to give it a little bit of a puffiness. Um, so put it down when you draw your pattern and cut it out with the pattern. That way you'll have it to sew right in between. You can sandwich it in between the two outside pieces. And when you sew around it, then you don't risk the the um, the idea that, that it could move whenever it's on the doll, which I don't know how much a doll will go through. You never know.
okay so then the next thing once you get your ears attached I just sewed mine on I what I do is I go through the back of the head to start the eyebrows and the nose sculpting you just go through the back if you keep entering and exiting the same spot on the back of the head it's not as noticeable and all you're going to do here is pull the thread through to get your knot to stay inside of the head you want that knot that you made on the bottom of your thread to stay inside the doll head so you'll pull it through the back until it catches and just leave it inside the two pieces of uh, you know between the head parts so you're going to get to where you draw your line draw where you want your eyebrows draw where you want your nose and you're going to come through to your first line on your eyebrow and you're just going to basically make a ladder stitch you're going to um, go back and forth underneath of where you want your eyebrow to go and you're just going to pull it tight and pucker it up and when you go down through you can see here you want to catch some of the stuffing in your needle so you catch the stuffing in the needle and you're going back and forth making a ladder stitch so it's basically um, you know when you pull one end it pulls the whole thing and it tightens it so you just go back and forth and you're going to catch that stuffing inside now right here I just had a thread that was sticking out. I'm just wiggling it down so it, part of the knot came through the front. So I just used the needle to slide it back in. But just go back and forth, make your ladder stitch, and pucker your fabric. And you'll do the same thing across the eyebrows and down the nose. And that'll just make your doll sculpting. That's called doll sculpting. And it just makes puckers between your two ladder stitches on either side. Okay, so once you get everything sculpted on your face that you want sculpted, you're going to move on to painting your eyes. And what I used here was just some basic colors I got. You can get them at Walmart. They're nothing, not real good acrylic paints, but they're good for this project, definitely. They cover really well. Um, this one is just the Crafters one, Craft Apple Barrel. So it was just an ivory colored paint and I just use this for the basics for the eyes. So when I put this on the fabric, it may, gives me a base to paint the rest of the eye. And you can see I just drew the shapes of the eye and then you just want to fill it in with a basic color. This is the color I chose. Uh, fill it inside the lines and that will give you something to work with when you're drawing the details of the rest of the eye. And it will also serve as the whites of the eye around your eyeball too just put a nice thick coat on there and if you don't want to wait for it to dry you can always pop it in the oven or use a hair dryer for fabric it seems like using the oven works the quickest and I keep my oven on almost the entire time I'm making a doll and when I say use the oven it's usually 200 degrees <laughs>
Okay, guys, so as you can see, this is just regular uh, wool thread or yarn, anything that you have on hand or if you can find. I think a red or a brown would have been nicer for a leprechaun, but, you know, I just use what I had on hand. So any color you have, just pull it apart till it looks like fuzzy hair, and then that, that makes the beard and the hair. And I used a fork, it seemed to work really well to comb it out. It didn't pull on it like a comb would and didn't rip it out of the um, out of the mustache and beard that I was making in the head. Just keep forming it to the way you like it. I wet the end of my fingers and spun it to make the tips of his mustache and just kind of formed his hair the way I thought it should be. And you can see it makes it look wavy. Then for the shirt, all I did was, um, you know, cut a typical shirt size out. I measured his arms. I laid him out on the fabric before I cut it to see how long I wanted the sleeves. I just basically cut the length and doubled the width from the arms to the shirt because you'll need room for it to insert the arm into the shirt and sew then up the armpits. And this part here I'm showing you is the leprechaun pants and all I did was just cut basically a rectangle with a slit in the center um, just a little bit bigger than I thought I needed I laid the doll out again onto the fabric just to see what size I wanted as I said before in other videos I don't normally have a pattern because I get too bored and I've got to move on to the next doll and to do something over and over I think I would just quit doing it but because it's always a challenge and it's always different and always something new I usually don't make a pattern. I usually just do a one-of-a-kind doll unless I have a very simple thing that I'm working on that I'll make several for festivals or things like that. But you can see I just basically laid them out, decided how big I wanted it, made a rectangle size. I didn't quite double the size, but I made it a little bigger than I thought I would need. And then I just painted the green stripes onto the fabric to keep them looking prim and uh, just sewed up the sides. Now here you can see my fabric's a little bit off because I cut one piece and didn't cut the other, which was okay because I knew it, but like if you, you're doing it, you probably want to match them up. And then onto the boots and the hat, all I did was draw the shape that I wanted out on felt, cut four of the shoe size, sewed two sides together, and the hat I just cut a triangle, or I'm sorry, a rectangle and a circle and sewed those together to make a little hat. It was very easy and of course this is bright green, Kelly green and I did grunge it up a little bit you can see with some more coffee stain and sometimes it's hard for the felt to take the coffee so maybe a little bit of brown paint in your coffee stain helps too. And now it's time to dress your leprechaun uh, making sure everything fits. If you have to use a needle and thread and stitch up something that might be slightly too big that works. Sometimes I'll do that if I get the neck sli slice too far open or the V in the front too far open, something like that. And you can always remember, you can always sew your shirt or your pants onto the doll. I did end up sewing the pants onto the doll instead of making, instead of gathering his waistline, I sewed them right onto the doll because there really wasn't a lot of extra fabric and I hate to waste it so in this case it was going underneath of the shirt jacket so I did sew the striped pants onto his body and that too helps keep them from moving around and you know if you're transiting them in the mail stream or if you're taking them to a show then that keeps everything in place too so I just ended up sewing the pants onto the doll and the boots
life. So for the pot of gold, I just had a round styrofoam bowl type shape. I think I got it at Michael's a long time ago and just covered it with black felt. I just tucked each piece of felt into the foam. And I'm sure you could use like a plastic bowl or anything you have around the house. I made a little um, like a tube of the same fabric and stuffed it for around the top. And I used that Gorilla Glue spray can. I used that to spray into the fabric and sprinkle with cinnamon to make it a little more grungy. And I just tied a uh, jute rope around the kettle. Now here moving on, I wanted some little clay coins. The picture had shown some coins of some kind. I didn't have any um, Sculpey clay or anything like that. So I made some salt dough. Just Google it online. It's very simple. Just like salt and, and flour. It's just so simple. This one had a little bit of baking powder in it. And I mean, they're all very similar. Uh, just make sure you bake them really well. I'm not sure how long they'll last because you know, I don't make them that often, but I just made little discs, rolled them out and put a little stamp in them. That's how I got started till they were nice and totally baked through. You wanted to be completely no moisture whatsoever because you're going to paint them and then put a finish on them. So these are what mine looked like. I put little pineapples and of course the cranberry cornstalk name in each of the coins and just baked them really, really crispy. And this is what they look like. Now the underside isn't as nice, some them end up a little more hollow and you know a little crunchy or what I want to say crumb, they're not crumbly either, just a little, they're hard. So um, you want that, it to be like that. And I didn't want mine perfect, I wanted mine primitive. You could have, you know, went with the Sculpey clay, I'm sure it would have been nice if you want it perfect, but I wanted mine to look handmade. So I baked them all, spray painted them black and a little bit of gold dust on the coins as well and then some more glue and cinnamon and then I ended up see this is what some of them look like they have like a crater in the center but that's good because then you know that it's there's nothing moist inside and they're gonna keep for I mean probably our lifetime old soap but I just glued each little coin into the pot um, where I wanted them to be For sticking with us to the end of the video if you like our video and we've earned your subscription please hit like share and subscribe so that you can receive all of our future notifications for our next video mm -hmm.